Section 2.5, Proving Angles Congruent. Our first definition, vertical angles. Vertical angles are two non-adjacent angles formed by two intersecting lines. In our diagram, I have two lines that are intersecting. My two angles that are not vertical are in set of pairs. Here, angle one and two are not adjacent. Therefore, they are a pair of vertical angles. Our other pair of vertical angles are angle three and four. They are also not adjacent. If we take a look at the diagram, when I have two lines that intersect, if I select the two adjacent angles, those are defined as a linear pair, which we know is the sum of two angles that add up to 180, but also are adjacent, therefore forming a straight line. In this example, they want me to name the vertical angles to the given angle. The first thing we need to do is identify the angle that is given to me, then identify the two lines that form that angle, and then find the angle that is not adjacent to that, but is also formed by those same two lines. Here I have angle A, G, B. A, G, B. That is formed by line AD and line EB. Therefore, the vertical angle to that has to be formed by those same two lines, which would be angle E, G, D. Our next angle, angle DGC, DGC. That angle is formed by lines AD and FC. Therefore, the vertical angle to that is angle AGF. Number three, angle FGD. Angle FGD is formed by line FC and AD. Therefore, the angle vertical to that would be AGC. Number four, angle BGC. That angle is formed by two lines, FC and EB. Therefore, the angle vertical to that angle is F, G, E. Number five, angle A, G, E. That is formed by two lines, A, D and E, B. The angle vertical to that angle is D, G, B. Now that we know how to define and identify vertical angles, we can state the vertical angle theorem, which is vertical angles are congruent. The diagram is from the definition page. There, we identified pairs of vertical angles, one and two, and three and four. But from the theorem, we can state that angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle three is congruent to angle four by the vertical angle theorem. This is a powerful theorem because if I know the measure of one angle, I can determine the measure of all the angles in this diagram. For example, if I let angle one equal 30 degrees, I now know from the theorem that angle two is vertical to it is also 30 degrees because they are congruent. I also know what the definition of a linear pair is. I can find the measure of angle three or four by the definition of a linear pair. That would be 180 minus 30, which would give me 150 degrees. Now I know angle 4 is vertical to angle 3 and therefore congruent. Therefore, that is 150 degrees. Let's prove the vertical angle theorem. We're given angle 1 and 2 are vertical. We want to prove that angle 1 and 2 are congruent. In our theorem, we have angle 1 and 2 are vertical. That's our given statement. We know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 is 180. The measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is 180. I can use either the angle addition postulate or the definition of a linear pair for the reasoning for step two. Since they're both equal to 180, these expressions can be set equal to each other by substitution. And I know that the measure of angle three equals the measure of angle three through the same number, the same value. I can subtract from both sides, so the subtraction property 
and end up with the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two, or by the definition of congruency, angle one is congruent to angle two. In this example, they want me to find the value of each variable and the measure of each angle. Here I'm given two intersecting lines, and I know they form pairs of vertical angles. So I know that 4x and 60 minus x are a pair of vertical angles. From the vertical angle theorem, I can state that those two expressions are equal. 4x equals 60 minus x. Add x to both sides, I get 5x equal to 60. Divide by 5, I get x equal to 12. Now I just substitute into the expression 4 times x, or 4 times 12, is 48 degrees. And I know that this is also 48 degrees, so I don't have to substitute in there because these are vertical angles, and by the vertical angle theorem, are congruent. I know I have a set of supplementary angles, or also a linear pair, since they're adjacent. So I know 180 minus 48 is going to give me a measure for this angle to be 132 degrees. And these are also a pair of vertical angles and congruent, so this is 132 degrees. Again, they want me to find the value of each variable and the measure of each angle. Here, I have two intersecting lines again, and I know they form pairs of vertical angles. I know that 120 minus y and 3y plus 40 are a pair of vertical angles. And by the vertical angle theorem, I can set those expressions equal. And when I do, I'll have 120 minus y equals 3y plus 40. I'm going to add y to both sides. That gives me 120 equal to 4y plus 40. Subtract 40 on both sides, I get 80. Divide by 4, I get y equal to 20. Now I substitute into my expressions, and I'm going to get 120 minus y, which is 100 degrees. I don't have to substitute into this expression because I know vertical angles are congruent, so this angle is also 100 degrees. By the definition of a linear pair, 180 minus 100 makes this angle 80 degrees, and this is another pair of vertical angles, and they are congruent, so this angle is 80 degrees. Here they want me to find the value of each variable. Again, I have two intersecting lines. I know they form pairs of vertical angles. By the vertical angle theorem, I can set 8x plus 15 equal to 55. And when I do, I can solve that. Subtracting 15 on both sides, I get 40. Divide by 8, I get x equal to 5. Now I have the value of one variable, x. I have to find the value of this variable, y. I know that this is a pair of supplementary angles, or also a linear pair. I know that they must add up to 180 degrees. So all I do is take 5y plus 55 and set it equal to 180. I will subtract 55 from both sides, get 5y equal to 125, or y equals 25 degrees. Our next theorem is the supplementary angle theorem. Angles supplementary to congruent angles, or the same angle, are congruent. Here I have two diagrams. I have a linear pair, angle 1 and 2, and another linear pair, angle 3 and 4. And we know that 1 and 2 are supplementary to each other, and 3 or 4 are supplementary to each other. But I have given information. The given states that angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent. And by the supplementary angle theorem, that would tell me that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And what I want to do is to prove the supplementary angle theorem with this given information. So here I have angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. I know that that is given. Step 2, I know since they are supplementary or also a linear pair, that I can set angle 1 plus angle 2 to 180 and angle 3 plus angle 4 equal to 180. And that can either be the angle addition postulate or the definition of a linear pair. Since they're equal to the same value, I can set these expressions equal to the each other by the substitution property. I also know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, and they are in my equation. 1 and 4 are the same value of the same measure. And what I can do is subtract those values on both sides. And when I do, I get the measure of angle 2 equal to the measure of angle 3, or angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 by the definition of congruency. Similar to the supplementary angle theorem is the complementary angle theorem. 
Angles complementary to congruent angles, or the same angle, are congruent. So it's the same procedure, but instead of two angles adding up to 180 degrees, they add up to 90 degrees. And what I want to do is to prove the complementary angle theorem. Here is my given information. Angle 1 is complementary to angle 3. 1 is complementary to 3. 2 is complementary to 3. Therefore, by the complementary angle theorem, angle 1 should be congruent to angle 2. If I use this as my given information, I can then state that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 is 90, and also the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is 90 degrees. That's either by the angle addition postulate or the definition of complementary angles. Number three, since they are the same value, 90 degrees, I can set each expression equal to each other. Measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. I know 3 is on both sides of the equation. They have the same measure, the same value. Therefore, I can subtract that from both sides. And when I do, I get the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. Or by the definition of congruency, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Here we have theorem 2-4. It's pretty much common sense. All right angles are congruent. We know the measure of right angles are 90 degrees. Therefore, all right angles must be congruent. Theorem 2-5. Perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent right angles. I'm given line AC is perpendicular to ray BD. When they intersect, perpendicular lines form two right angles, and they are adjacent. In that case, since they're both right angles from the previous theorem, I know that they must be congruent. And therefore, this proves theorem 2.5, perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent right angles. On this example, I want to find the measure of each angle. The measure of an angle is three times the measure of its supplement. I'm going to use this procedure to solve the given problem. Number one, identify the two things you're talking about in the problem. The measure of an angle, so I have the measure of an angle, and the measure of its supplement. So I'm given an angle and its supplement. This will be my labeling of the problem. Step two, identify the one you know least about. The measure of an angle is three times, therefore I know information about this angle, is three times the measure of its supplement. I know nothing about the supplement, and that's the one I want to label X. Number three, label the other from the given information in the problem. Here it states the measure of the angle is three times the supplement. The supplement we let be X, therefore the measure of this angle must be three times that value, or 3X. Now, what I'm going to use is the other information in the problem, which is I have an angle and its supplement. Therefore, I'm talking about supplementary angles. Supplementary angles are two angles whose sum is 180. Therefore, two angles whose sum must equal 180 degrees. Now, I just solve this equation. x plus 3x is 4x equals 180 degrees. When I divide by 4, I'm going to get x equal to 45 degrees. Now, they ask me to find the measure of each angle. I know the supplement has a measure of 45 degrees. I know that 45 times 3 is 135 degrees. And to test the fact, I add these two together, and I better get supplementary angles, which is 100. And 80 degrees. On the example, they want to find the measure of each angle again. Here, I'm given angle A is two thirds as large as its complement angle B. Again, I want to identify the two angles I'm talking about in the problem. That would be angle A and angle B. I want to identify which one I know least about and let that be X. Angle A is two thirds, so I know information about angle A as large as its complement angle B. Therefore, the one I know least about is angle B, so that is X. Angle A is two-thirds as large as that angle. That angle has a measure of X. Being two-thirds as large, that would be two-thirds X. Since they are complementary, I know these two angles must add up to 90 degrees. X plus two-thirds X equals 90. 1 and 2 thirds x 
equals 90. Putting this into an improper fraction is going to give me 5 thirds x equals 90. Multiply by 3 fifths on both sides. x is going to equal 54 degrees. Therefore, angle B is equal to 54 degrees. And when I take 54 times 2 thirds, 2 times 54 is 108, divided by 3 is going to give me a measure of 36 degrees. And these two angles are complementary, so their sum had better be 90 degrees.